Okay, another Assetto Corsa drive. Uh, this is Iroha. This is uh, Japan. Um, Uchiga, is that right? And Nico. I, I think that that's wrong, actually. But it's in Japan, um, and it is a nice, complete circuit. It's actually a two-part uh, hill climb, a downhill, uphill, and uh, some connectors here that make it a full course. So we're going to come out here and uh, give it a go. And as you've seen... Uh, there is some traffic. Also had uh, a viewer suggest that I turn on neck effects. Um, not a big fan of them. I've tried them before and don't really like them all that much. Wow. I uh, got them uh, set to kind of a conservative level, but I gotta say I don't really like them all that much. Doesn't feel like a two uh, two lane road either. I imagine that uh, neck effects probably works a lot better if you've got uh, track IR enabled, which is, uh, if you're not familiar, is a technology that allows for uh, lighthouse beacons to read uh, infrared sensors on the side of your head that you put on a hat or you put on some sort of other contraption that you hold onto your head and tracks your real head movement. I am one of those that I tend to move my eyes more than I move my head when I'm driving a real car, and mostly that's because uh, I have actually been in a real race car where you don't have the luxury of being able to move your head a whole heck of a lot because of a Hans device. gotten used to uh, smaller head movements and leveraging mirrors and other such things to see around the car, which is actually one of the real challenges for sim racing, is that uh, you don't have the same kind of uh, inputs that you have in a real life car to help give you a de depth of sensory perception around the car. One of the 
reasons I love triples. Um, people ask me why I like triples. Is I, I get, I don't really pay attention to the left and right monitors all that much, but they're in my peripheral view. And I use that input um, more than I actually realized. <laughs> I had to shut down my uh, two external monitors for uh, Petit Le Mans because of performance issues that I was encountering and couldn't quite figure out. I've since figured them out, but um, it was like learning to drive all over again. This is a turnabout point. I did figure out what my performance issues were from Petit Le Mans. Um, turns out a uh, piece of software that I use for the screen on my cube control wheel, which does not use SimHub. It was uh, before the era of uh, where everybody in the wheel manufacturing community started using SimHub as the dashboard manager, all that sort of stuff. So it uses a proprietary Actually, ironically, Asetech um, owned technology, I believe. But uh, it started uh, consuming a, a huge amount of CPU, and I suspect it's largely due to all the iRacing changes around telemetry and all that stuff that the software, because it's no longer being actively maintained, uh, just couldn't keep up with or was having some sort of a problem where it periodically just got hung. So um, that was causing me all sorts of problems. And of course, reducing the burden, removing the uh, recording and streaming aspects off of the gaming machine. This also helped performance immeasurably. Well, actually, measurably. <laughs> it isn't immeasurably. He certainly cut in the corner. I can't say that I really like the neck effects. I'm getting used to driving with them now. I'm sure it's going to wreck me for anything else I need to drive. <laughs> so I probably won't use it for very much, but uh, somebody requested it and I thought, oh, well, I'll go ahead and configure it and see, see if it's changed or if I can get it to work the way I want it to. And I've got things turned down. Like uh, steering, I've got turned down to like 35% or something, uh, so it doesn't follow steering, you know, at the default 70%. 
Um, also turned down uh, the road following quite a bit. I think it was set at 70% and I set it down to uh, 50%. And I'm not even sure I like this, the 50%. This is the frustration of traffic on a hill climb. So if you get somebody that's actually going slower than you want to go, but is going down the middle of uh, the road, you're kind of stuck. Ah! Or you misjudge because you're watching him instead of where you're going. Faster. Uh, that's a wrong turn. I always think it's funny, um, every once in a while, I'll get, uh, I'll get young kids that will, uh, ask me if I can do burnouts. Well, like, absolutely. But I won't. Because <laughs> uh, once you start paying for the tires yourself, it's a whole other thing, right? That is a complete lap around. I actually should have finished the lap. Oh, I did finish the lap. Uh, that's a lap around. Um, so let me know what you think. Um, it's actually, it's kind of a fun track and it's a full circuit. So it does come back and uh, cross the start finish line. It allows you to keep going again. Um, it's got a few weird spots in it, but it's a lot of fun. Um, I actually enjoyed that. And with traffic, it wasn't so bad. It was uh, a, a little bit more entertaining than just uh, going out there alone and by myself. Um, but uh, definitely, um, definitely fun, regardless. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. And um, be sure to uh, like, subscribe, and all that other good stuff uh, if you did. Um, love the comments. Keep them coming. Getting a lot of interesting suggestions. Uh, and so if you've uh, suggested a track, chances are very soon. It will be coming to a recording near you. Thanks for joining. See you on the next one. Bye now.
Rennsport.